everyone, this is Jenny Gibbons of Woodsy Studio, and today I want to show y'all how to import scripts that you've written into UE4 as data tables. If you have the VN framework, the visual novel framework, that I put on the UE4 marketplace, then you can follow these steps exactly to add new scenes to your game. Otherwise, um, you can just kind of learn from this to maybe set up your own system as, uh, as you desire. But um, first of all, uh, I should mention that I'm working in um, my own game here. Uh, it's our next Woodsy Studio game called Crimson Spires. Um, but a lot of the files are going to be the same as what I've put in the VN framework. So to start, I'm just going to show you the struct um, that I use to set up the scenes. That's called ST Script Lines. In the VN framework, you can find that in the structures folder. So if you want to open that up and look at it, here is how you determine um, what the columns of your data table are going to be. These are basically the headers for each column. So this is where I've set up um, all those different columns. You've got the speaker expression, the sound files that are used. This is for like voice acting clips or um, sound effects that are used. The text is going to be the actual dialogue. The special event is where I put code for like choices and branching in the scene. Special effects, like it says, uh, like camera shakes and that sort of thing. Character horizontal tells the uh, character where to be on the screen um, as far as like left or right. And scale is their scale. So all of these I've set up um, with different uh, types of variables that go into each column. And this is the format that our scripts eventually need to be when they turn into data tables. Okay, so to demonstrate, I'm going to uh, bring up a scene that I've um, gotten ready here. I've just pulled it out of our full main script um, to convert. And uh, keep in mind that you can convert a lot of your script at once. You can convert much more than three pages. Uh, but when you actually bring it un into Unreal Engine 4, it's best to break it into smaller scenes. Um, so that you can control how each one is triggered in the game and all of that. So just make sure you break it up into scenes before you import it into Unreal Engine 4. Uh, so right now this is just a three page scene and I've got some little instructions I've prepared for myself here. The first thing we want to do is uh, re find and replace all the different names and we're going to put in a little piece of code that's going to prepare it to be a spreadsheet. So I'm going to start with the narrator going to go to find and replace and um, I'm using open office but hopefully whatever word editor you're using um, has a similar feature and I'm going to search for the narrator colon and then I'm even going to include that little space in my search so that it gets overwritten I don't want that space in the final spreadsheet and I'm going to replace it with this and the semicolons are actually um, they represent different columns so this will be the speaker name. This is the expression. I'm just adding nothing as a default expression and then some blank columns after it. So I'm going to replace all. So I replaced all my narrators. I have to do that with each character. So I'm going to do Sarah here next. Also keep in mind that the name you're putting here needs to match um, a name on your character enum list in Unreal Engine 4. So to show you that, um, in the VN framework, if you go to the folder called enums, it's called characters. And so this is a list of all the characters I've used in the game so far. You can add new ones with this button here. Um, so I'm just writing names that are going to match this enum list. So just be careful they match so that um, it converts smoothly. All right, gonna replace all my Sarahs. Replace Erica. And let me see if there are any other names. I think that's all in the scene. Next we need to replace the line breaks. Um, so I can actually find those with, by searching for the dollar sign in Open Office. I'm 
replace that with some more empty columns and a new line. All right, so you can see it added um, those empty columns to the end of each line. So now we're ready to save it. I'm going to save it as a txt file to start. Okay, so it's saved as a txt. Yes, I want to keep that format. That's fine. Close this out. I'm going to browse to that scene. Um, so here's what I just saved, and I'm going to change the um, format here to a CSV file. It will give you a little warning, but yes, I do want to change it. And I've set this up so that my CSV files are automatically going to open with uh, OpenOffice Calc. So that's what I'm going to use to edit my spreadsheets. Um, you can use other spreadsheet software as needed, like Excel. So now I'm going to open up this newly created CSV. So I'm going to uh, search for what's separated by semicolons. Oops, didn't mean to highlight that. I don't want it to break up by commas right now because I use a lot of commas in the actual script. Uh, keep in mind if you do use semicolons in your script you'll need to clean those up because it will try and break that into a, a new column. Alright, so now we've got the bare bones of our script here. And you can see this will happen like if you have little notes in your script like I do. You'll just have to clean that up a little bit. Going to replace that with code eventually. I'm going to add a new row here at the top. This is going to be our for our columns. And I've written out the different columns here. Remember that this matches um, the script lines structure that we set up in Unreal Engine 4. So we want the speaker followed by the expression followed by the sound oh and yes you, you do keep this very first column just blank this is where by default the uh, row names go we will add stuff beneath it here in a second but the column um, header is blank add text I'm gonna zoom out a little format this to uh, wrap it just to help clean things up a little. Got our special event here. Special effect. Care horizontal and care scale. So now we've got um, our different columns set up the way they need to be imported. We do ha need to put in entries here for the row name. Um, or UE4 will give us an error. So a nice thing you can do, uh, remember for the row names, it doesn't matter but uh, what it is. It could be letters if you wanted, but um, each one needs to be unique. So what I like to do um, for speed, this is a little chunk of code you can add right here. Um, and this is going to automatically calculate, oops, don't want that in there, the row name. And it's huge. So I'm going to copy this code a few times and now we've got our row name automatically being generated for us. So that's really handy. And you just want to fill that out. So I'm going to take a few minutes here to add some code that's very specific to the visual novel framework um, I've created to add code to my special event column um, that's going to uh, cause the questions in this scene um, to work correctly. So in this scene, um, the main character Erica asks Sarah several questions and the player can ask every single one or they can only ask uh, one and then skip past it. So 
Um, I call that a cycling choice, um, and it's something that um, you know you might use if you have kind of a detective or investigative type story. And it's something that um, I've set up code for in the visual novel framework. So the general format is that when a choice starts, we put code in the event, the special event column. Um, this is choice one, just because it's the first choice in the scene. And then after that, we put the master choice log value. And the master choice log is a large global array that keeps track of every choice in the game. So I believe that this is going to be choice um, choice six. All right, now I need to scoot these up. Then we've got choice A, choice B, choice C. And this is a cycling choice, so I'm also going to add an, um, an exit choice, choice exit. Oops, do reformat these a little. All right, so we've got our main choices here. We've got an exit question that, that pulls out of the loop. Um, so for each question here, we're gonna put um, start code. So this is choice A, we put choice A start. So going to delete this line. So the letters for choice A, that, that jumps you to this line. This one for Jessica and Gary's relationship. That's going to be our choice B start. It's fine to have some uh, empty lines that doesn't hurt anything, but I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. Next, we've got our choice C start here. Definitely clean this up. We don't want that to show up in the dialogue. Here's our diamondback point. So this is diamondback, oops, choice one. You always put diamondback choice and then the, the scene choice number. Um, then I'm gonna put underscore and cycle to, so that it knows that this is gonna be a cycling choice. Delete this line. And that's actually all the code we need to get this choice to cycle. All right, so now we're ready to try and bring this into UE4. Make sure my row names are all in order. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these. Don't need those. Um, you do wanna make sure every line has a row name or like I mentioned, yeah, you'll get an error when you first try to import it. So now I'm gonna, s actually, um, this is a step that um, is kind of specific to open office. But whatever word editor you're using, um, you do need to make sure you convert it properly. So remember when I brought this in, I, I, I broke it up depending on semicolons. But when I bring it into UE4, I actually want to break it up with commas because that's how UE4 reads it. And I'm not exactly sure why, but my um, commas in the script are always fine when I do this. Honestly, not quite sure why. I believe this is scene eight. Oops. I like to try and number my scenes somewhat. Um, so I'm saving it as an ODS file. This is also handy just in case you want to bring it back up um, with all your, your formatting and everything. I'm going to save it again, save as. So I'm going to convert it back to a CSV file. format and the reason is because I want to break it back with using the field delimiter as a comma because that's what UE4 wants to see so okay so now it's a CSV file again now I have to close this out um, if you try if you were to try and import it while it was still open you'd get an error in UE4 so now I'm going to find that CSV file it's not that one. Here it is. Here's what I created. I'm going to go to my scenes folder. I'm in chapter one. All right, let's see if this works. 
going to drag this in. All right, it can tell that it's a data table. I need to select the um, struct now. So it's the ST script lines is the struct. And OK. And excellent, I didn't get any errors. Um, you might occasionally see an error um, if you forgot like a row name or something didn't exactly match the struct that you have set up for your, for your script lines. Um, but I've done this a lot. I managed to do it without making any mistakes. So now you can open it up and, and you see here is a script that's now ready to be edited um, as a visual novel. Thank you all for watching. This is Jenny Gibbons of Woodsy Studio, and I will continue to make more tutorials um, showing a bit about how I've set up the visual novel framework and just general good tips for creating visual novels in Unreal Engine 4. If you'd like to uh, learn more about my games and support my work as a creator, check out my Patreon. There's a link in the description. And thank you so much.